gonna make him an offer. Funny how. What's going on, Chuckleheads? I'm back for another episode of Dingo Talk. I am Carla Guadagnino. Today, my guest is Steve Thompson, the athletic director here at Bethany College. Um, we're going to talk about a lot of things. Steve at Worcester, Steve at uh, Kent State, Eureka, and then his time here at Bethany, the things that have changed, the things that he's worked on um, with some of the new coaches, and there might be a couple stabs at some former guests. Uh, so I hope you enjoy it, Chuckleheads. If you haven't yet, like, subscribe, leave us a comment, give us a thumbs up, and uh, enjoy. What's going on, Chuckleheads? I am Carla Guadagnino. This is Dingo Talk alongside Bethany Athletic Director Steve Thompson. Steve, thank you for being on the show. Yeah, thanks for having me. Before I forget, because there's your team. It's a little I've, bigger than before. I've been waiting on this. They uh, they had, they ran out of the half gallons. So <laughs> we're both going with the gallon of tea today. So in a sense, I win. Yeah. Yeah, you got the <laughs> you got the golden goose of, of the tea. There you go. Um, <laughs> Steve's going to talk about everything. In, in part one, we do the we get to know Steve, figure out everything from his uh, college days up through his professional career till he got here. And then in part two, we talk about you here at Bethany. Yeah, absolutely. So, uh, BA in history from the College of Worcester in 2001. Yep. Backtrack to your recruitment process. You played basketball at Worcester. Yep, yep, played basketball at Worcester. Uh, really, it, it, it really didn't start my recruitment at Worcester, really didn't start till uh, late in my senior year in, in high school. Uh, uh, I was a local kid, grew up in Northeast Ohio, went to Rittman High School. Uh, and late in the year, uh, we were struggling. We weren't, weren't real good. Uh, I think we might have won seven games. Uh, <laughs> but uh, it was a I, long season. Right, it was a long season. I was having some individual success, but I was okay with that. Uh, it, you know, as they tried to build for the future and, mm -hmm. and some of that. But uh, I had a road game uh, at Smithville High School, a, a conference opponent, which interestingly enough is where my dad grew up, uh, had a lot of family there. So we bring a big crowd and I, I score 10, 15 in the first quarter, like having a day. Uh, coach sits me. Uh, <laughs> we, we butted heads on occasion. Uh, you know, I was the, the typical somewhat 18 year old, had a little bit of an ego on me uh, and, and didn't handle that the best. Mm -hmm. uh, sit here and honestly say that. Uh, so he sat me and I sat. Uh, I did not go back in until the fourth quarter. Uh, and after the game, you know, I'm ticked. We lost. Uh, they ended up, uh, Smithville ended up winning the league, um, all that. Uh, and I just bolted out of the gym, went with my family. Uh, and that was the first night Worcester's assistant basketball coach was there. You know, I didn't really learn this till about two years later that he was there <laughs> waiting to meet and talk with me. And I just took off. I was so mad. He couldn't figure out why I was sitting the whole game or, or what was kind of that inner uh, turmoil amongst the team mm -hmm. was going on. Uh, it was either that weekend uh, or the following week uh, I played at Northwestern uh, and they had a kid on their team, uh, led the league in uh, scoring. Uh, and he was already committed to Worcester and we played AAU together. After our game, uh, it was about a 45 minute bus trip before cell phones too. Uh, after the game I go out and I'm talking to his dad, mom and dad. Uh, and, and we're talking for a while and I don't see anybody else come out of the locker room from our team. And it hits me like I better go see where uh, the bus is or get on the bus. And by the time I get from the gym to the the doorway, I can see the bus pulling out. Uh, and four cell phones. It's forty five minutes. <laughs> uh, their coach, uh, his coach at the time was Chris Stokes, uh, who had uh, spent some time at Worcester, worked a lot of Worcester camps. So we were just we we sat there and visited really until the bus could get home. They could tell my dad that they forgot me, and my dad could drive back uh, to Northwestern and pick me up. Uh, so during that time, uh, the Northwestern coach said, you know, I'm going to call Coach Moore, put a good word for you as well. And uh, so over the course of the, you know, the next four months after that kind of was the, the quick recruitment. I'd looked at uh, Ohio Northern, uh, had a good visit there. Uh, my brother and my dad both went there. That was probably one of the top ones. Mm -hmm. Allegheny had a great coach I really liked. Uh, and Phil Ness, that was uh, a pretty close choice. Uh, but it, it's the end of the day. Picking Worcester got to be a no-brainer. Uh, you know, I'd like to sit here and, and tell you it was all about the academic selection, but it was a chance to play for one of the best programs in the country mm -hmm. uh, at the time, and it was a local program, so you'd have local support and uh, just that environment. 
uh, you couldn't beat. And then uh, they're the Fighting Scots. So the second or third game I went to was a Worcester Wick game, which is one of the biggest rivalries in Division Three uh, basketball. And off the tip, well, first Worcester was let out by the bagpipes. So you know, that's the Fighting Scots, and yeah. the, the hair on your arm stands up a little bit. And then uh, they had a couple studs on their team where off the tip, they had a play where they alley ooped the guy jumping center and, and he hammered it. And I was like, oh my God, I want to be like, the place went nuts. <laughs> uh, you know, it was like. And that's the decision. That right? was the I mean, decision. It was a no brainer at that point in time. Chance to play for Coach Moore, uh, play in that kind of program uh, and, and be a part of so many championships that couldn't, couldn't turn down. And, you know, got a pretty good education uh, with my bachelor's in, in history. Well, so the first play you see at Worcester is a dunk. And there's a video that I believe you yourself put out this yeah. year of a uh, dunk contest. Yeah, so uh, I'm, I'm going to say I think that was my sophomore year. Uh, I played JV as a freshman uh, and really didn't know if I was going to play, you know, have any varsity minutes or anything like that. But uh, I was in a fraternity. Uh, and they were uh, mostly baseball and mm -hmm. a, couple, a couple of basketball guys. So as we're getting ready for the dunk contest at Midnight Madness, like, egging each other yeah. on and uh our we had two all-american centers or center and power forward that were also uh, in our fraternity and so they're dunking and you know they've got two three inches on me a lot bigger i'm way all of you know buck 50 at that point in time probably i would uh, say maybe a buck 55 maybe from the video i mean it's a, I, I look you, you know you're, you're video right. ads five pounds you were, I mean, it might have been a flex before right. the, oh yeah you know i got into it uh you know my parents made the trip over there excited and that's when my my mom and dad are videoing it so i took the sound off but uh so i throw it up uh you know gonna dunk it off the ball or off the bounce and i rip my shirt off i go up and hammer it and i start flexing and then you see i, I think it gets to the point where uh, the fraternity guys run yeah. out and, and celebrate a little bit uh so it was fun uh you know you gotta own it and you gotta have a little bit of fun while you're there so you finish up at Worcester with a bachelor's in history. Yep. What, how did you get to the decision to go to Kent and why sports administration? Yeah, so I really, uh, I didn't even go right to Kent. Uh, so uh, I, I, it was late April, early May. I was trying to decide uh, what I wanted to do with my life. Really, I'd started out both my parents are teachers. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I, I come to really value what they did in the classroom and really what, what teachers do I think is amazing uh, every day uh, and then getting to see kind of behind the doors like that was I was going to be a teacher and coach for probably about two and a half years of college and it hit me like I, mean, not, I don't want to work in the uh, high school uh, setting anymore um, so really I had no idea what to do what I was going to do I did have lined up an internship with the Cleveland Browns in the equipment room there uh, so and that was supposed to be basically a couple weeks in May and June and then all of end of july all of august uh and then you know they they, they told me there would be a possibility for a, a full-time position mm -hmm. there so so that was kind of as i was getting closer to graduation that's where, where my mind went uh and then one day i you know on on campus i was just playing some golf uh maybe a week or two before graduation and one of our assistant coaches at worcester says hey my brother uh, is, is hiring out of illinois college if you want to be an assistant basketball coach uh, so I'm like, yeah, I'm, I'm interested. Uh, about two days later, I'm in a car driving to Jacksonville, Illinois, uh, to interview for the job. Uh, the head coach there uh, was an assistant uh, for a long time at, at Worcester. Mm -hmm. He had actually left the year before I came to Worcester as a player. Uh, so we have we knew a lot of, like we didn't overlap, but we knew a lot of the people, like mm -hmm. a lot of my teammates that were older. He recruited, uh, so we, we you know we meshed really well, uh, and, that, and that's where I went to be an assistant basketball coach. Then it was, okay, I'm just gonna be a college basketball coach. While there, I got to do a lot of different things with running events, helping with other sports, and, and really started to just kind of like that aspect of it. Uh, I then went to Ashland University uh, two years after that. To as be, the equipment coordinator. As the equipment manager. I got that on yeah. that. Now the uh, Cleveland Browns thing, I- that's, That one I don't talk a lot about because it was such a, such a short time and uh, it was a neat experience. Uh, but there's no way I was going to do it full time. Yeah. Uh, after that experience, no way I wanted to. Uh, so I went to Ash Ashland two years, uh, had a great experience there, uh, but I knew I wanted to get into administration at that point in time. Uh, but I needed my master's, and for whatever reason to this day I don't understand, 
Uh, I went and sat down with the AD at the time, Bill Goldring, who ironically, his, his wife, Jean uh, Goldring, went into the Hall of Fame this year uh, at Bethany. Wow. Uh, was a three-sport athlete here. So just kind of random connections and how everything weaves together. But uh, I went to him. Uh, we had a great relationship. I said, you know, I, I, I want to do what you do. I want my master's. He's like, well, we can't pay for it here. Uh, they have the program, all that, but they won't pay for their employees to get a master's. So I started looking. Kent State became available. Had some connections there. So that's what took me to Kent State for a couple of years uh, to get my master's in sports management because I knew I needed that to be where I'm at today. Well, and then you kind of, you leave Kent, or yep. you leave Kent, go to Case, then end up back. So Kent still becomes part of you before you get back, well, before you get yeah. to Bethany. Yeah, oh yeah. But so you get your master's and then you become the assistant AD at Case? Correct. Uh, spent five years, that, that was a, a neat experience. Uh, you know, Division Three, obviously in the PAC in football, uh, but a different kind of Division Three because it's a you know big research institution. I think there's probably 10,000, 12,000 students there. Uh, you know, and only a small fragment uh, are student athletes. Had some great experiences there. Uh, we went to the football playoffs, so I got to run the uh, two rounds of, uh, yeah. of football playoffs when I was there. Uh, did some construction on the baseball field. Uh, I think soccer made the t so, so around some success and really enjoyed it. But I was young, starting a family, and uh, they were back in the Acton area. So ultimately, Kent became a better option for me, uh, a little closer, and I got to go back to Kent in, as an assistant AD, and I had great memories of there. I never left there uh, as uh, I was promoted to full time after I, being a graduate assistant, uh, and the AD there, Lane Kennedy, my first go around was, was a tremendous mentor of mine, and uh, Andre Ciolda, who's another, but was my boss. They, they were just great people. So an opportunity to go back. Uh, and you got to run the football field and uh, the uh, baseball field. Yep. I, so I so I oversaw uh, when I, I oversaw all the athletic facilities, but I had people. Uh, like I didn't really do much <laughs> with the gym. Uh, had a, had a guy who's now at Ball State, uh, Josh Paulus, who w was tremendous with the gym. Uh, Julie Gap uh, ran kind of the field house operation, uh, and, and I mean she was kind of the brains behind it all. I was maybe the puppet, in it all. <laughs> but got to run the football field uh, complex, which was neat because the soccer's there, uh, their field hockey stadiums there, their softball field, uh, and then uh, the baseball fields were kind of in between both campus and, and the football field, which great baseball field and, and all that. So that was a neat experience. And then Eureka. And then, so let's talk about Eureka. What was what was that experience like? Compare them to like when you get here. What's the, the similar campus, bigger campus, smaller campus? V very similar campus. So I, I go to Eureka uh, because you know, kind of in my heart, I always knew I wanted to be a, a Division three AD. Mm -hmm. uh, my experience at, at Worcester, I, I would not change for anything. I think that's. Uh, Things that happened in my life while I was at Worcester kind of made who I am today, I think, in, in a lot of ways. Uh, so I, the, the chance to go to Eureka came up, uh, and I know, uh, I, I mentioned Lane Kennedy, one of the things he, he mentioned to me was, you know, you always want to appreciate your boss mm -hmm. uh, and really enjoy working for them, be like-minded, uh, you know, be in alignment with what, their vision. And on my visit at, at Eureka, the, uh, the president was absolutely dynamic. I knew, I knew we could do some things. Uh, I knew as I wanted to move up kind of this, the ladder of Division Three that fundraising was gonna be a big big part. And he had big dreams. Uh, the, the Vice President of Development, who was there, Mike Murtaugh, was th those two guys had big dreams for, for what Eureka Athletics could be. Uh, so so I, we took, I took the job. Uh, it's a neat place, the same, Disciples of Christ. Mm -hmm. uh, so same founding faith. Um, and same size institution for the most part, but only 10 sports. So so very different in that makeup. We're here, there's 22, and you know we have equine and some mm -hmm. other things. But the only other real difference is it's flat. <laughs> you're not, you're not, <laughs> you don't have to go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, We're going to no that. I want to hear the first story of you coming up the <laughs> up 67 or 88 right? or whichever way. There's there's no bridge. That's a, <laughs> so <laughs> it's amazing I made it. But that, that's, I mean, it's very similar in, in the institutions. And so you're, you're at Eureka until the spring of 18? Yeah, so I came in the summer, uh, July of 18, I came. Okay. So I just celebrated my two-year anniversary here. So, you, where is the process, uh, like when do you start the process of looking at Bethany and 
this uh, I I am thankful for the search. It's probably one of the most unique searches I've ever been a part of. What are you gonna? Oh, I, know. I was gonna let you. I was, I, got, I was gonna drop you, but so we're gonna come back and we'll get the interesting search, and then we'll get the uh, the story the story of his drive here in the town. So. Um, <laughs> This has been Dingo Talk, part one. I am Carla Guadagnino with Steve Thompson, the athletic director here at Bethany College. Uh, I'm going to send it over to KJ with Maple Shade Outdoors. Go ahead, KJ. What's going on, everybody? This is Kieran Dunn, founder of Maple Shade Outdoors. You're currently watching Dingo Talk with my man, Carlo. If you're anything like me and you're really enjoying this content, you should like and subscribe his page. You, while you're on YouTube, you should probably just head over and like and subscribe Maple Shade Outdoors. Check out our page, enjoy some videos, some outdoor content. You might as well hop on Instagram, Facebook, follow us, Maple Shade Outdoors. Now that's enough about me. I'm trying to get back and watch the rest of Dingo Talk, so I'll talk to y'all later.